Captain Scarlet and the Mysterons first aired in 1967 and was the fifth series to be made in Super Mario Nation. Following the phenomenal success of Thunderbirds was always going to be a challenge, but Captain Scarlet proved to be almost as popular as its predecessor and has remained so over the last 50 years. I'm glad to hear it. Go on. The series, the first to be made under the Century 21 Productions name, follows the exploits of Captain Scarlet, the number one agent of a world security organization called Spectrum. After a disastrous mission to Mars in which fellow agent Captain Black destroys an alien city, they're obviously hostile. Okay, Lieutenant, let them have it. The invisible beings known as the Mysterons declare war on Earth and announce that their first target for retaliation will be our Captain Scarlet and Brown race to protect him but are killed en route and reconstructed by the Mysterons using their special ability to recreate the exact likeness of an object or person known as Retro Metabolism. The Mysteron Captain Brown fails in his attempt to kill the President, who is then kidnapped by Scarlet and taken to the top of the London Car View. In the ensuing shootout with Captain Blue, Scarlet falls 800 feet to his death. But miraculously recovers from his fatal injuries and is no longer under Mr. On control. It would seem that this Captain Scarlet is now indestructible. His body too now possesses the ability of retro metabolism, enabling him to return to duty and become Spectrum's greatest asset in the fight against the Mysterons. It's great to be back. But Captain Scarlet wasn't alone in this fight. Yes, sir, Captain Blue. SIG, Captain Scarlet. He was usually partnered with Captain Blue, with regular support from Captains Ochre, Spectrum is green, Grey, SIG, and Magenta. Yes, sir, Colonel, sir. While on Spectrum's aerial headquarters cloud base, operations were supervised by the no-nonsense Colonel White, initiative should never clash with discipline, and communications controller Lieutenant Green. Angels 1, 2, and 3, immediate launch. In most episodes, though, Spectrum's first line of defense was the Angels, a group of five female fighter pilots, Destiny, Harmony, Symphony, Rhapsody, and Melody, who, along with Lieutenant Green, was the first regular black character in an Anderson series. Proceed to cloud base. And the Angel Interceptor itself was just one of the many memorable vehicles that Spectrum had at their disposal. Splendid! Tell me more. Other aircraft included the Spectrum passenger jet and Spectrum helicopter, but it was the ground vehicles that proved the most popular, especially among merchandisers. The flame red Spectrum saloon car, the rarely seen maximum security vehicle, and everyone's favorite, the Spectrum pursuit vehicle. The SPV was an armored tank that, much like Scarlet himself, appeared to be virtually indestructible. Inside the SPV, the driver sat in a rear-facing seat designed to reduce injuries in the event of a crash, an idea that seemed to make perfect sense to Anderson at the time, but caused nothing but confusion for the viewers. We started to write in explanations in the scripts, but then, of course, I realized that not everybody would see that episode. If we put it in, say, five times, it would become boring, and if we only put it in once, a lot of people wouldn't know and it was something I totally regretted to do. The series continued Anderson's march towards live action by introducing more lifelike puppets, with heads scaled in correct proportion to their bodies for the very first time, but with the greater realism also came a reduction in mobility and expression if this lifelike illusion was to be maintained. Another notable departure from what had gone before, the tone of the series was exceptionally dark for a family show, with guest characters being ruthlessly killed off in almost every episode in order to be reborn as agents of the Mysterons, and often being defeated just as violently. <laughs> 
The darker tone is firmly set at the start of every episode, as the chilling voice of the Mysterons lays out this week's evil plan before we see Captain Black standing alone in a graveyard, the former Spectrum agent now just a zombie firmly under the control of the alien intelligence he once tried to destroy. I have come to pass on your instructions from the Mysterons. Despite these major changes, some things remained reliable consistent. The special effects sequences from Derek Medding's model department became even more spectacular, and Barry Gray once again provided a phenomenal musical score for the series that perfectly spotlighted both the heroic exploits of Spectrum and the sinister activities of the Mysterons. The end titles theme on the first 14 episodes was largely instrumental, with real-life pop group The Spectrum stepping in to provide a memorable theme song for the final 18. But perhaps even more memorable than the song was the seven-note staccato drum beat used for scene transitions. What the? Captain Scarlet and the Mysterons ran for just one season of 32 action-packed episodes, each running just 25 minutes, yet was a critical and merchandising success both in its time and in subsequent decades. Books, comics and toys based on the series were all immensely popular, and the show enjoyed high-profile repeat runs on the BBC in the early 1990s and early 2000s. And because of this, I am convinced of our ultimate victory against the Mr. Arms. The continued interest in the series even led to Anderson creating a CGI reimagining of the show, which launched on ITV in 2005 as New Captain Scarlet. Despite falling victim to poor scheduling, New Captain Scarlet retained the memorable characters and dark tone that has continued to make the original series so popular, while the CGI production enabled New Captain Scarlet to do things that wouldn't have been possible for his puppet counterpart. But with the original Captain Scarlet celebrating his 50th anniversary in 2017, with a slew of new merchandise including brand new high definition transfers of all 32 episodes being released on Blu-ray, it's clear that the Super Mario Nation series that started it all will live on in the hearts and minds of both the public and fans alike for many more years to come. On behalf of everyone, all I can say is, thank you, Captain. Thank you.